Welcome to the Point of Care Ultrasound Screencast Series. My name is Michelle Damon and I'm a fourth year resident in emergency medicine at University of Montreal. Recently, I had the opportunity to complete a critical care ultrasound rotation at Western University and I will be your host for this episode about the McConnell sign. To start this short screencast, I will describe a clinical case which is related to our subject of study and also illustrates the importance of point of care ultrasound at the bedside. Then, we will talk about the McConnell sign in more detail and finally, we will conclude with the resolution of the clinical case. Without further delay, let me tell you about a very interesting case. A 71 years old woman came to the emergency department with two days of progressive dyspnea, dolce's pain with a pleuritic component, and symptoms of lightheadedness. She denied any other cardiac, respiratory, or infectious symptoms. She had not traveled or had any surgery in the last several months, but she recalled right calf pain and swelling of both legs that forced her to bed rest for the last three days. Her past medical history is relevant for a remote history of cerebral venous thrombosis and a previous coronary artery disease. She denied the use of anticoagulants or hormone therapy. Besides her abnormal vital signs, no relevant findings were found on the physical exam. Concerning the investigations, the EKG shows an incomplete right bundle branch block as well as an S1Q3 T3 pattern. Her troponins were mildly increased but remained stable. The chest X-ray was normal. A VQ scan was ordered and was found positive for a bilateral pulmonary embolism. The patient received 18,000 units of fragment Q once and was admitted on the medical ward. A comprehensive cardiac ultrasound to assess the right ventricular function was requested but not completed since the patient became hemodynamically unstable overnight. An urgent call to the critical care outreach team was made. On their arrival, they found a disoriented, disnake and profoundly hypotensive patient. Volume station was initiated while an urgent point of care ultrasound was completed by a resident taking part of the critical care ultrasound rotation. Here we see the apical four chambers and parasternal short axis use. There are several abnormalities here to appreciate. On the apical four chambers view, we can see a severely dilated right ventricle, which is clearly larger than the left one. As we recall, a normal right ventricle is less than two-thirds the size of its left-sided neighbor. There is also severe right ventricular dysfunction with apparent akinesia of the right ventricular free wall. On the parasternal short axis view, we can again appreciate the size of the right ventricle but in addition, this view allows us to recognize that the septum is abnormally D-shaped with paradoxical septal motion or septal bowing. This focus demonstrates McConnell's sign. But wait, what exactly is McConnell's sign? Well, McConnell's sign is a distinct echocardiographic pattern that can be seen as a result of massive acute pulmonary embolism. It consists of a combination of right ventricular dysfunction with akinesia of the mid-free wall and hypercontractility of the apical wall. McConnell and colleague initially reported a specificity of 94% and a sensitivity of 77% for this constellation of finding in the diagnosis of acute pulmonary embolism. Even though early reports suggested excellent specificity and sensitivity, not all studies have shown such as convincing results. For instance, more recent literature demonstrates that chronic pulmonary hypertension, as well as any cause of acute increase in pulmonary vascular resistance, can result in McConnell signs, with PE being the most common etiology. Point of care ultrasound is a powerful diagnostic tool that can be used to rapidly identify important causes of hemodynamic instability at the bedside, leading to timely administration of life-saving treatments. But it is important to keep in mind that there are no echocardiographic signs sensitive or specific enough to perfectly rule in or out pulmonary embolism. In other words, clinical acumen is still of paramount importance. In hemodynamically stable patient, a gold standard diagnosis using CTA or VQ scan is warranted 
prior to submitting a patient to the risk of thrombolytic therapy. That being said, in a severely compromised and hemodynamically unstable patient who present with signs or symptoms of massive PE, the finding of McConnell sign during the pulcus is still likely indicates a PE and may be used to support aggressive treatment such TPA. If you would appreciate more information about the sensibility and the specificity of McConnell sign, there is an excellent article published in 2015 in the Journal of Emergency Medicine that reviews all the mixed evidence concerning this topic. Let us now conclude our clinical case. Following the administration of systemic thrombolysis, the patient showed an impressive clinical and echographic improvement. Her vital signs normalized and the POCA study shown a near normal right ventricular size and function. No more McConnell sign or D-shaped septum could be visualized. The patient continued to improve without any bleeding complications and was discharged from the hospital with oral anticoagulation therapy two days after her thrombolysis. In conclusion, the McConnell sign is defined as a regional pattern of right ventricular dysfunction with akinesia of the mid-free wall with hypercontractility of the apical wall that is likely to be found in patients with acute massive pulmonary embolism. Even if its specificity is not as promising as initially thought, if recognized in the right clinical context, it could support the decision to use TPA in a severely ill and hemodynamically compromised patient, potentially saving them from clinical deterioration and cardiac arrest. Here are the references used for this screencast. I would also take the time to thank Dr. Arnfield and the whole team of the Critical Care Ultrasound Rotation, with a special thanks to Haley Hobbs for her teaching her patients, and her precious collaboration to this screencast. Thank you for listening to this screencast on the McConnell sign, and we hope to see you soon on the Western Sono site. <laughs>